Workers uncovered the most amazing discovery that stunned the world and attracted international media coverage. Was the city was the most beautifully planned they had ever seen. It is replete with temples, pastel painted peasant dwellings, workshops, stables, and other buildings, including a palace. Replete with hydraulic underground waterways, it has a perfect drainage system along with other modern amenities. The intriguing question that arises out of the discovery is. Where is that city today? Its secret location was recently revealed to a select group of people who were given permission to explore and film the city. It exists in a huge natural cavern system below the Giza Plateau that extends out in an easterly direction under Cairo. Its main entry is from inside the Sphinx, with stairs cut into rock that lead down to the cavern below the bedrock of the River Nile. The expedition travelled along an underground river that led to a lake one kilometre wide. On the shores of the lake nestles the city, and permanent lighting is provided by large crystalline balls set into the cavern walls and ceiling. The second entry to the city is found in stairs leading up to the basement of the Coptic church in Old Cairo, Babylon. Drawing from narratives of people living in the earth, given in the books of Genesis, Jasher and Enoch, it, it is possible that the city was originally called Geigel. Film footage of the expedition was shot and a documentary called Chambers of the Deep was made and subsequently shown to private audiences. And it was originally intended to release the footage to the general public, but for some reason it was withheld. A multifaceted spherical crystalline object the size of a baseball was brought up from the city and its supernatural nature was demonstrated at a conference in Australia. In the deep within the solid object are various hieroglyphs that slowly turn over like pages of a book when mentally requested to do so by whoever holds the object. That remarkable item revealed an unknown form of technology and was recently sent to NASA in the USA for analysis. Historical documents recorded that during the 20th century staggering discoveries not spoken of today were made at Giza and Mount Sinai. And Egyptian rumours of the discovery of another underground city within a 28 mile radius of the Great Pyramid abound. In, in 1964 more than 30 enormous multi-leveled subsurface cities were discovered in the old Turkish Kingdom of Cappadocia. One city alone contained huge caverns, rooms and hallways that archaeologists estimated supported as many as 2,000 households, providing living facilities for 8 to 10,000 people. Their very existence constitutes evidence that many such subterranean worlds lie waiting to be found below the surface of the earth. Excavations at Giza have revealed underground subways, temples, sarcophagi and one interconnected subterranean city and validation that underground passageways connected the Sphinx to the pyramids is another step towards proving that the whole complex is carefully and specifically thought out. But secret knowledge of the Giza Plateau all rose to the highest degree of acceptability. A repeated denial of their existence by Egyptian authorities and academic institutions. Miles of underground passageways and chambers beneath the Giza Plateau were lit. Unless the ancients could see in the dark, the vast subterranean areas were somehow illuminated. Same question is addressed of the interior of the Great Pyramid. Egyptologists have agreed that flaming torches were not used, but ceilings had not been blackened with residual smoke, and both the Book of the Dead and the Pyramid texts make striking references to the light makers and that extraordinary description may have referred to a body of people responsible for lighting the subterranean areas of their complexes. Jamblichus recorded a fascinating account that was found on a very ancient Egyptian papyrus held in a mosque in Cairo. It was part of a 100 BC story by an unknown author about a group of people who gained entry to underground chambers around Giza for exploratory purposes. They described their experience. But we came to a chamber. When we entered, it became automatically illuminated by light from a tube, being the height of one man's hand, approximately 6 inches or 15.24 centimeters, and thin, standing vertically in the corner. As we approached the tube, it shone brighter. The slaves were scared and ran away in the direction from which we had come. When I touched it, it went out. We made every effort to get the tube to glow again, but it would no longer provide light. In some chambers the light tubes worked, and in others they did not. We broke open one of the tubes and it bled beads of silver coloured liquid that ran fastly around the floor until they disappeared between the cracks. As time went on the light tubes gradually began to fail, and the priests removed them and stored them in an underground vault they specially built southeast of the plateau. It was their belief 
that the light tubes were created by their beloved Imhotep, who would someday return to make them work once again. Among the tombs near Memphis, and in the Brahmin temples of India, lights were found operating in sealed chambers and vessels, but sudden exposure to air extinguished them or caused their fuel to evaporate. There is ample proof from eyewitnesses that lamps were burning when the sepulchres were sealed, and it was declared by later bystanders that they were still burning when the vaults were opened hundreds of years later. Some well-documented stories concerning the discovery of ever-burning lamps not only in Egypt, but also in other parts of the world.